welcome back to the Victory Team. Again, we're in the Sterling Valley Community Church. It's a lovely little church in central New York, not far from Lake Ontario. Welcome back to our series, the How To Series. It's how to apply the truth. We talked about the truth. I have a problem. I have a problem with my emotions, or I have a problem with sin. You could use this formula for anything, but I want to get out of it. I want to be free. People are always asking me, how to? This is how to. One, you find the truth. Separate the truth from all the other stuff, and believe me, and you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. The world, the airwaves is full of stuff. Get yourself a good Bible, a Bible you trust, and get into some truth. Find the truth, and find the truth, the principle, the example that applies to your case. And now we, we learn that, we have that information and now we're going to take that information and we're going to apply it to our lives. We're going to make it personal. Apply the truth by faith. It is a personal choice. Regarding emotions, God has emotions, but God doesn't sin. The Bible says, Paul wrote to the Ephesians, be angry, that's an emotion, and sin not. Don't let your anger run your life. Neither give place to the devil. That's how you open the door for the devil. You, you're not managing your emotions. You're not recognizing what they are and what they're there for. You're, you're living them out. Teacher, how, how, how to? How do I do it? How do I deal with these negative emotions? Well, we're going to find out. Just for review, emotions are a signal. They're your inner man communicating to you, if I could be that way, saying, you know, something's not right. There's some misalignment in our spirit. So we find the truth. What is right? Where should we be? How should we respond? And then we apply the truth. It's not enough just to have truth that's floating around somewhere. It's, you know, but we, we take that truth. We take that verse. We take that psalm. And we make it my psalm. This, that's, you read that psalm, you go, wow! I could have written that psalm. I feel exactly the same way. Good. Make it yours. Apply the truth. Personally, reckon ye also yourselves. No, reckon and yield. But it takes faith. That's how we bring the fact. That's how we go from here to here. From head to heart. We have to have a little faith. In the book of Luke, Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8, the disciples are with Jesus. And in verse 22, Luke chapter 8, verse 22, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, pay attention to this, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. Now, just keep that in mind. Jesus said, let's go to the other side of the lake. That's what the Word of God says. We're going to the other side. Just keep that in mind. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Talk about peace. Talk about joy. Don't you wish you had peace in a storm you're sleeping? And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water. We're in jeopardy. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> no, not that jeopardy. <laughs> and they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Really? Then he arose and rebuked the wind 
and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was calm. <laughs> wow! And he said unto them, Where is your faith? Why would he say that? Where is your faith? There are some people that believe that, well, Jesus, it's, Jesus has to give them the faith. That's not the indication I get here. Jesus asked them, where is your faith? You see, I said we were going to the other side. So we're going to the other side. You saw me with great peace, despite circumstances. I set an example for you. Come on. Let's not scream out, we perish, and all that kind of stuff. It's okay. Let's have a little faith, baby. Have a little faith. <laughs> Paul was witnessing to a king, Agrippa. Get Agrippa, Agrippa. And he said, Believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. And unfortunately, King Agrippa said, You almost I'm almost, almost, almost persuaded to believe. Not quite. Some people are like that. Are you persuaded? When you're persuaded, you're exercising faith. King, Mr. Agrippa, you have it in your head. You know the foundation of faith. But do you have it personally? Do you have it in your heart? Dear friends, do you believe the prophets? You might have it up here. You're going to win, they call them the sword drills. I can find it, I can find it. I, I can spell Deuteronomy, I can find, you know, those minor prophets. I can find them faster than you can. But do you have it here? Do you believe? What is the foundation of faith? Teacher, help me. The foundation of faith is simply you have reliable information. You're making a decision based on the information that you have. That's why it's so important to base your information. Get truth. You're going to make good decisions because you're making decisions based on truth. You trust the information you have. And secondly, and it's associated to that, do you believe the character? Do you believe the nature of the person that brought you the information? In this case, do you believe what God said? Is he a perpetual liar? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you can't get any higher. That's why I love the word of God. I don't have any doubts as to his character, his motives, and so on. I'm confident that Jesus is good for his word. Amen. When, uh, <laughs> when a young lady and a young man are courting and perhaps entertaining the thought of marriage, uh, sooner or later she may ask her friend or family or somebody that she trusts, is he the right one? What do you think? If if they're a good counselor, they're not going to say, yeah, yeah, get that one. Or, no, no, no. That's not, that's not their business. But their business could be this. Well, are they good character? Are they reliable? What are their friends like? What do they say about them? What do other people, what do they see? What's his track record? Oh, well, he just got saved. Well, maybe give him some time. Let's see how it goes. Or, you know, he, he's a spot on. I mean, he's well respected, well liked. Sounds like a green light so far. I, would, I wouldn't hesitate to continue in that one then. <laughs> Those are the good ones. Hebrews chapter 11 says this about faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Between the not seen and the hope for 
And over here is evidence and substance. How do we get from unseen to evidence? Hope for to substance and evidence. That vehicle is faith. I have a picture in the slides of a car. The car is called faith. You simply, I, I don't see it, but in my mind I see it. I get there. I get to where God is. I get to the facts by faith. I'll tell you a little story, then we'll close. I have a friend, Pastor John Asquith uses this as a straw man. And he teaches this to make a point. A man who's had trouble with the law, he has to live with his mother. It's one of the terms of his parole. His mother's, uh, she's an alcoholic. She's an old, bitter, angry, talk about emotions. She's a, she's a nasty old bird. And they have to live together in this mobile home that's not made for two warring parties. They don't get along too well. Their life consists of they grunt at each other and they swear and curse and one storms out, one storms in. Terrible. Maybe you can associate with that. You're in a situation of living where not very comfortable. And this man wants God to do something. He's just at his wit's end. He's at the end of his rope. His own mother hates him. His own mother's a lush. She's terrible. You, you know this. I don't have to paint a bigger picture than that. Yet this man found truth. He found a fact that pertains to him. This is something that he read a few episodes ago. I gave you homework to read the Ten Commandments. He read the commandments. Thought he'd start over. One of those commandments was number five. In fact, number five is honor thy father and mother. And he goes, yeah. I can, I can understand that. I see that commandment. And God, and God just said, make it yours. And he thought, I have to honor my mother. Too late for my father. He's gone. But my mother, are you kidding me? That old battle axe? <sighs> but he applied it. He believed that if he followed this Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 in the New Testament, Paul re references that same commandment. He says, honor thy father and mother. Then he has a parenthetical statement, which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. That young man or that man that was on parole had to live with his mother, had to, had to be in this case, he realized, my life is not very well. <laughs> it's not good at all. I wish it was well with me. I'm going to, this is what I want you to do. I just, I'm going to try this one little fact, one verse, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to make it mine. And he changed the way he approached his mother. Went home and he cleaned the kitchen. He washed the dishes. And when his mother came staggering in with foul mouth and custom, and he didn't say anything. He just said, you know, did you eat already? She stormed off to bed and slammed the door. Cleaned, vacuumed. The next day, same thing. He had the house cleaned up, and she stopped for a minute. What do you, what do you really want? Nothing, mother. You know, can I help you? And about the third or fourth time she stopped, she goes, what's going on? What, are you, what, what kind of game are you playing? Because I'm, I'm just trying to honor my mother. God said so. By and by, you know what happened. That old woman just broke down. Her son loved her. She really did love her son. And they cried and 
They were reconciled. Two lives were changed. One verse. One verse in the Bible applied. God did the rest. By way of review, we all have emotions. God has emotions. They're not bad in themselves. But when the emotions drive us, when they control our lives, let's learn the facts about those emotions. What is it? Learn the specific truth. It's like your, I've used this before, the dashboard light on your car starts flashing. Well, let's investigate. What does that mean? Let's not ignore it. Let's find out what that is. Let's get the facts about that. May I suggest truth you're going to find in God's Word and separate that from the other philosophies, opinions, and so on and so forth. Then when you learn that truth, when you understand the facts, now you apply those facts to you. Make it a personal truth. So faith cometh by hearing. You hear some information. And hearing by the word of God. <laughs> that's just not information. That's fact. Did not Israel know? I'm in Romans 10. Yes, they knew. But they didn't mix what they heard with faith. It was not profitable to them. It was just facts to them. God gave them such an advantage. He gave them the word of God. They could serve God. They could know God. They were a special group of people. But they didn't put it to heart. It was just information, just secular knowledge. We can do better. We can believe what God said. Exercise faith and find both. And then we trust. We trust God's word. We trust the process that God has set up. We're exercising faith. We don't simply stop at the truth. We make it our truth. It's good. Speaking of truth, we have great sponsors. Here's one now. Hello, I'm Pastor John Asquith of the Black Creek Baptist Church in Black Creek, New York. We're uh, in western New York, down near the Pennsylvania border, and we preach and teach the King James Bible. We preach and teach the good news of Jesus Christ. For those who are interested, we have a website, one soul at a time, O N E, soul at a time dot net. We'd love you to visit. All right, God bless you. If you are enjoying this series, and I hope you are, we really want to help you. Would you like it? Subscribe and comment. You're welcome to comment. And I hope you share. This, go ahead and take it, copy it. We want it distributed. We want, we want to help people everywhere, all right? All right, God bless you. Take care.